gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime! It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving! Hello again, it is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Steve Post alongside Aaron Evernham. Hello, Aaron. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Fantastic. Did you have a nice Easter weekend? Nice holiday weekend with the fam? I did. You're going to find it hard to believe, but I was at another horse show. No. Yeah, another horse yeah. show, and um, then got to spend some time Easter with family. So, That's oh, good. as well. How about you? Did you oh, hit- fantastic. Richmond. Oh, Richmond, yeah. Doing a little, a little NASCAR thing up at Richmond. Yeah. And I uh, had fun. NASCAR Wheel and Modifieds are Friday night. They stole the show. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, they went around I there. The last, oh, there. my gosh. The Modifieds there were so good. Great racing, Xfinity Series, Cup Series, racing in the rain. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That had was a little neat. bit of everything. Yeah. Had a little bit of everything. Uh, a lot of, lot, of, lot of good stuff happening over there and really, really fun. And uh, just, just good times. That's for sure. Good times, for sure. Good. Uh, before we get into the hot topics here, um, and I should have said something to you beforehand. Maybe you have, have you seen any of Danny Dietrich's posts this week on Twitter? Yes. About the 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 rear end, the, yes. yeah. Have you seen that? What's I, I just I think uh, Danny Dietrich Twitter is a fascinating. No, it's fascinating. It's fascinating right. conversation because <laughs> it's there controversial. Are, there are, it's right. Interesting. There are some times where it's like it's just it's just throwing yeah. flames, and then there's times like this where it's like, and when you have you know PPM and Jamie Ball and and Kevin Swindell. You just have extremely good dialogue with what yeah. Danny started. You know, I didn't read it. all of it. I saw his post about the seat yeah, in the the, seat. the, yeah. the torque tube rear end, or the you know coming up. Um, but I didn't. I'll have to go back and look at it because that stuff is fascinating. You know, there's obviously safety is a huge part of our sport, and that was close to a, yeah. a major incident. Right, and I, what I think is fascinating is that is and like I said, the other drivers. Yeah, uh, I think it was PPM jumped in and said, "Hey, when I had this, this is what happened." Obviously, Kevin Swindell has has yeah. paid the the highest price for this uh, with with his paralysis, and he really jumped in and talked about it's not this, it's that. Yeah. And again, Steve Post talking tech is the worst thing in the world. But I just find it fascinating, and we we scream and holler about social media and everything. But boy, there are times and places where Danny Dietrich's Twitter is fascinating and interesting, and I I I, I hope. You know, we're always hoping to move the bar on safety. Yeah. And D- Danny's point is, I don't know what we do. I'm a six foot two guy in a s- sport full of five foot five race car drivers. You know what yeah. I mean? What we're going to do? But I just, I think that that dialogue. Mm-hmm. The the only thing that frustrates me is when some rube like Steve Post jumps in and tries to offer up. I mean, I know nothing about this. I d- I didn't jump in, but you have a fan jump oh, yeah. in and say something, and it's like, wait a minute, we've got you know Danny and Kevin and and Jamie Ball and these guys. Let's let let's if you've yeah. got skin in the game, if you've built chassis, if you if you've got skin you've in the had game, your butt in the seat. if you've had your butt in the seat, let's yeah. let's let this discussion go on because then what happens is you get frustrating and uh, you know, yeah, yeah, then, then you don't read then, it all, but no, there's actually good content. There's good there. content, yeah. There. So so a big thumbs up to Danny uh, for posting that. Um, you know, it's just and and here's the other thing that I know, and Danny works really really side by side with Maxim. I mean, he was the one that developed the tall Peter, chassis. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is conversations they're having on Twitter, but I know there's conversations that are being had as well with the chassis manufacturers and yeah. the, and the folks involved that can make these decisions. So I just find it interesting. I think, I think it's, it's easy to roll our eyes and talk about that, but I think there's times it's really, really well done. And this week is one of those examples yeah. where it's really been well and done. Bring awareness and bring some attention to something that. Yeah, hopefully we can come up with a better, a better. Yeah, system. I mean exactly, and I, so salute to, uh, you know, salute to Danny and Kevin and everyone, and like I said, and there's other drivers involved with it. I, yeah. um, I was, I forget, there, there was other drivers involved with it. That when I had mine, and then they put in parentheses, uh, two T two vertebrae break. It's like, oh my yeah. god, it's just there's you know, been a lot, but there's sport. been a lot, yeah. yeah. So it really is so uh, fascinating stuff. This is the, the the beauties of it as far as that goes. So and if you're interested in it, uh, just go to X or Twitter, or whatever, call it. Follow Danny's post because it's really fascinating 
uh, some of the discussion and and no, it's actually this and yes, it's actually that and this is what happened in my situation and it, and it also highlights that this is not a simple solution. Yeah. Because my wreck was different than your wreck was different than this guy's wreck and in my wreck this did this and in my well if that did this and we did this oh man that's a bad combination. Yeah. There's so many moving parts and pieces. I think the one thing I bring out of this that that's anything that I can get my stupid radio guy brain around is <laughs> that there are so many moving parts and pieces there's not an easy solution. Yeah. And maybe that's, you know, people are frustrated we're not moving forward fast enough, but that's the reason. There's, yeah, there's so many move, yeah. moving parts and pieces, yes. But in my case, it did this. It's like, oh, that's that 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 solution wouldn't work there and might be worse there. Yeah. So uh, it's good stuff. Great, great stuff. So tip of the cap to Danny for starting that dialogue. And uh, again, dialogue is fascinating, but dialogue a lot of times is the first step in change. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, maybe somebody can come up with something that we're, we're not, or, you know, we're, Danny's not in that situation again, nor none of our, nor any of our drivers. So, uh, good stuff. So kudos on that. Um, the hot topics here tonight, uh, world of outlaw, NOS energy drink, sprint cars, Saturday night, 81 speedway, the Wichita outlaw showdown. How about Rico Avery, man? He's Wheeling got that place it. sorted out, doesn't he? He sure does. That's his second consecutive win there with the world of outlaws. No doubt about it. And this has been fun. Nine races, nine faces. Yeah. This is a record to start the season for the World of Outlaws. That's Pretty neat. amazing, yeah. isn't it? I didn't know that, and that it was a record, but that's it's impressive. for the, really? I mean, But that that goes to show the level of talent and the, the depth of the teams. Yep, absolutely. And there's a couple that still haven't won yet that yeah. I think we can make a case that could win a race. And, uh, you know, um, I think Logan Schuhart's one of them that yeah. is in that camp that hasn't won yet. Um, again, Bill Baylog just keeps – he, he's, he's – he it's is right. Yeah, year. he really is doing a nice job with that. So um, Rico, his 16th World of Outlaw win. It was Rico, David Gravel, and Donnie Schatz on the podium. Williams Grove, wow. I watched this race. I got back after the NASCAR wheel and modified race to my Richmond hotel, and I hit the Dirt Vision double. Uh, missed the, probably the first 10 laps of Attica, but the timing was Williams Grove <laughs> right straight over to Attica. Um, Anthony Macri, Aaron 17th to first. The that, concrete kid was rolling. Yeah, he was. I mean, that's not an easy feat on a track like Williams Grove. No, and it really didn't widen out totally. No. Here. And uh, this was uh, this was uh, last lap, I think we're seeing on the screen. Yeah, last lap. And Mike Walter Ooh. just did everything he could to hang on to the car. He ended up, uh, actually, what you saw on the screen was last lap. Mike Walter ended up gathering it up and coming back third. Coming yeah. across line third. But um, I heard a Jeremy Elliott interview with Macri. And Anthony was like talking to Joe Mooney and it was kind of like, this is one of those throwaway nights. When you qualify, you start 17th. This is one of those throwaway yeah. nights. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, hold the, hold the phones. Yeah. Uh, this is not a throwaway night. Um, it was, it was, I noticed it when I was up there last week in the heat race, there was a few laps where I'm like, man, the speed in that 39 car is dramatically more than everybody else. Yeah. And he certainly found it in that uh, in that run from 17th to third. Macri has third win of the season, has two at Williams Grove, one at the fabulous Lincoln Speedway. It was Macri, Dylan Norris, and Mike Walter the third. Attica Raceway Park. This was great, man. What a great race this was. I, I dial up Dirt Vision. I watch Williams Grove, and then whoop, change the channel right over to Attica Raceway Park. Career first win for Bryce Lucius, uh, the number 32 car. Um, running around there, ran, and we're going to talk to Bryce a little bit later on, 17-year-old kid. Yeah. Um, running around there, Kale, Thom uh, Kale Thomas is there, Nate Dussel is Nate, Nate Dussel led the first part of the race. I thought at one time, I'm like, Nate Dussel, it was that kind of a race. Yeah. Where I'm like, okay, Nate Dussel's going to win this race. And then they got into heavy lap traffic. I mean, they, yeah. they were, this is good, old-fashioned, old-school Attica, Attica Raceway yep. Park lap traffic, okay? Nate Dussel. Then Kale Thomas takes the lead. Thomas just closed in on him in a hurry. Yep. And I'm like, okay, Kale Thomas is going to win this run. And then I'm like, who is this Lucius kid? Because And then Thomas bobbled a bobbled, little bit, and yeah. Lucius got by. And then, to his credit, we, we see so many times winning a race is winning a race is, is a skill set. And we see so many times someone gets the lead, and they don't properly win the race. 
Bryce Lucius, man, he just stuck that thing right on the bottom and just went. It was yeah, like, I ain't looking back. I ain't doing anything. I'm just going to go as fast as I can. It was like he just went and, and scored the win. Uh, Kale Thomas was second. Nate Dussel was third. What a great race. And, and finally, Attica got their season open. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was their third attempt? Yeah, third attempt. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, crazy stuff. And uh, Farmington Empire Speedway, Corbin Keith picked up the win. Uh, saw a post. Um, Farmington is... Farmington is one of those racetracks that's had new management this year and uh, hearing a lot of good things, what's going on with the efficiency of show. Uh, they had 20-some sprint cars there, and so really, really good. So kudos to Corbin Keith picking up the win. We are going to talk to Bryce Lucius, and we're going to talk to the big cat, Brad Sweet. We haven't caught up with Brad. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked to him this year <coughs> on Wing Nation. We had a good conversation with him at the end of last year, yeah. but obviously a lot has happened. And so we've wanted to catch up with Brad, but it's like, okay, let's get closer and closer. Next Tuesday, Brad's going to be in the throes of getting ready to go. They re-kick off their season. So we're going to talk to Brad Sweet a little bit later on in the program. But when we come back, Bryce Lucius, the kid, the 17-year-old, joins us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion, and we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Fruit strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. So last week here on Wing Nation, I came back and I'm like, we all spent time talking about all the kids in California. Hold the phones. The kids in Pennsylvania are really, really good. This kid, Bryce Lucius, is sitting in Ohio. He's 17 years old, so he didn't say hold my beer. Well, he might have, <laughs> but he didn't. But he's like, okay, y'all want to talk about kids? Watch this. Yeah. And he took the win Friday night at Attica Raceway Park, and he joins us now on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Hello, Bryce. Welcome into Wing Nation. How are you? Uh, thank you guys for having me, and good. How are you guys? We're doing well. What has life been like since Friday night with that first career 410 win? Uh, just been mainly a lot of thank yous from a lot of people have been messaging me and just being able to get out a, uh, a bit more on Facebook and stuff like that. Bryce, you've run Attica now for, for a little bit, so it's nothing new to you. But the the, tr the lap traffic, the craziness, this race was no exception. Uh, just talk a little bit about the race and, and, and taking over the lead there at the last few laps from Kale Thomas. Yeah, no, at the beginning of the race, I felt like we definitely had a car to win. I just had to make sure I didn't uh, do anything silly and wreck it or anything like that in the early stages. But that's what about halfway is whenever I started really taking off. So then that's what I think. Craig uh, Mintz had a right rear go down, so that's whenever we got by him, and then we're slowly closing in on Nate, and then we all got the lap traffic. And that's whenever Kale got by us all, and then I decided to move up, and I didn't really like how that was, so I just moved back down, and then also got held up by a lap car, and I was able to get by him, and then uh, we're going into one. I was behind Kale, and he bobbled a little bit and was then ended up off the racetrack, and then after that, I was able to get by him. When you and, got uh, by, yeah, I'm sorry, you got by him, then what were the last lap and a half like for you? What was going through your mind at that point? Uh, just don't lift and don't mess up. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce, what was uh, what was Victory Lane like for you to, yeah, I know I think you have a family team to get your first 410 win. What was that like? Definitely, me and my dad and my mom were definitely really happy as all of us were sitting there celebrating and everything, and then just all my friends and stuff were all able to come down and say congrats and everything. And then uh, I got out of the car and just hearing everybody cheer was pretty cool. Yeah, it really, really, truly is. That that first win is really, really special. It really is. And and I actually saw when on your Facebook page and I saw, like, did you have some, like you say, your friends, like like you're 17 years old. Was there even high school friends and, and, and folks from school there with you as well? Uh, no, I'm homeschooled, so I don't. Okay. I've never, I went to public school until I was in about sixth grade. Yeah. And then we, for racing, we took me homeschooled because we were normally never home. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I just saw some friends and stuff like that, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, didn't, didn't know for sure where they were from and everything. But uh, that is so cool. It's got to be, it's got to be neat to be a seventeen-year-old kid and have your friends get a chance to spend time in Victory Lane with you. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm glad that they all came down and said congrats and everything. 
then because I know there's a or a couple of them that also had to go around the same night too. Yeah, Bryce, you talked about um, stopping public school and being homeschooled after sixth grade. Tell us a little bit about your background. Like, you got started in quarter midgets, I believe, but how did you kind of climb the ladder to where you are today? Yeah, I started racing quarter midgets when I was about six, and then I raced those until I was about 12, 11, 12, and then we moved up to micros for a year and a half. And then after that, we went to 305, and we were able, we were decent in those, but then we ran that for about a year and a half too. And then we hopped in four tens and ever since then, I've just liked it a lot more. So how old were you when you got into four ten? Uh, I would have been 16. Wow. Man, oh man. Impressive. It just seems like the ladder system. And I've thought about this, especially with Attica and Fremont up there, that ladder system. Um, and you know, especially when you get to the, the 305s, it seems like that ladder system really works well in it getting your feet wet in a full size car and then and then jumping up to the to, to the to the 410. Did obviously it worked well for you. Oh yeah, definitely. I was able to figure out what the car is supposed to do and stuff in 305s and just teach me how to race and uh, with the sprint car being bigger and everything. So that's a, whenever I got into the 410s, it really wasn't too much difference other than just having a lot more horsepower. Bryce, I saw an interview after the race where you talked about you weren't totally set on what your plans were this season if you wanted to do the Attica Fremont run for points. If you didn't do that, was there talk of more travel this year? Uh, yeah, we're we're talking about just traveling once we get things going and everything. Just uh, keep running around here for a little bit. And then once we get like a month or two around here, start getting around more. Well, and I think it's a fascinating year for a young racer like you. I mean, we, we live in this world of sprint car racing where everyone is high limits versus world of outlaws, world of outlaws versus high limits, all of the nonsense that goes on with it. you got to be sitting there in Ohio saying, okay, when high limits come to town, when world of outlaws come to town, it's got to be pretty neat to have all the opportunities that you'll have to race there in Ohio this year. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're putting up a lot of money. And that's, I know we're going to be running most of the high limit and outlaw shows that normally come around here. So I just hope we were able to run good during those. No doubt. So Bryce, yeah, I see you're from Finley, Ohio. Growing up, did you did you watch Chad Kemenaw? Where were the tracks even when you were racing quarter midgets? Do you keep up with sprint cars? Do your family have any previous involvement in the sport? Honestly, myself, I never really kept up with sprint cars until I got into them. But that's what my dad, he owned cars back in about 2000. Because he had select drivers in them. And I guess he was able, he was able to... Uh, get a couple of wins in those. So I think that's what but ended back up on the front stretch at Attica. It was pretty nice for him. I guess. Who were some of the drivers that drove for him? Uh, honestly, I don't really remember. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. That's uh, that's a, uh... You know, we, that's that's the thing. We look at it like 2010 was a couple of years ago, and 17-year-old term, <laughs> that was a long, long time ago. That is for sure. So um, it, it's just fascinating to me to, to, to see how you do it. So you are homeschooled, and uh, that just allows you more time to work on the race car, more time to go as a family racing. Is that is that the premise of the homeschooling? Yeah, that, and also I'm, I was able to get myself a job because I work with, or I work for Paul at Kistler. What? Oh. What do you do for Paul? Uh, just whatever he wants me to do. Mostly tear down and clean the motors, and then I'll go over and help Dave out. Well, that's a wonderful just mentor. Yeah, I love Paul yeah, Kessler. He's one of my too. favorite people. Me Paul Kessler is one of my favorite people on the planet. That has got to be really cool to to be able to 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 just learn and to spend time with guys like that. Oh, yeah, for sure, especially with all the history he has in the industry and everything and having his motors on the Outlaw Tour, High Limit, everything. He's just able to teach me a lot about motors and stuff. That yeah, is. that is a, that's great. So what's up, what's up this weekend? Are we back at Attico? Um, I'm pretty sure Attica, Fremont, but if those two get rained out, I'm going to try to talk my dad and going out to Atomic and running there too. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Fast Series is there on Saturday night, so cool stuff. Well, Bryce, I'm telling you, I was sitting there in my hotel room in Richmond, That's and impressive. I I didn't know what to expect. And uh, you did a great job getting the get, – you, you did a great job the first 28 laps staying in that top three or four. There's the biggest thing. We all talk about that. You put yourself in a position. You did a great job. And I said to Aaron before uh, when we were in the last segment, I said, man, when you got the lead, you just you just were gone. You just checked out. You, you gave nobody a chance at anything. Congratulations on the win. Fun chatting with you. Fun learning about you a little bit. And uh, we appreciate your time here on Wing Nation. 
Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me. There we go. Bryce Lucius, career first 410 winner up at Attica Raceway Park. What a show yeah. he put on up there. That was a great race, that is for sure. So what we need to do, we need to step away, and then uh, we're going to talk to a guy that's won a couple before. <laughs> uh, Brad Sweet joins us next. We'll get caught up on all things high-limit racing and everything else from Brad Sweet's perspective. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Stewart strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation. Oh, we got we got Brad Sweet's catching his breath here a little bit. We called him a few minutes early, and uh, it's just been one of those days here on Wing Nation where we're covering a lot of ground in a hurry, and uh, we really are excited about uh, catching up with Brad because there's so much going on. And Aaron, this has been weird. We used to watch Brad race all spring long, yeah. and it's been really weird not watching Brad race. <laughs> so I want to talk about that as well. But he joins us now via the Sage Fruit Hotline. Hello, Brad. Welcome back to Wing Nation. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me on. I, I actually want to go. We're going to talk a lot about high limit racing, but what has this spring been like for you not running on the regular basis? Uh, it's been, you know, different for sure. Um, you know, we raced eight times down in Florida and then up at Golden Isle there. Um, you know, so we kind of got got the season off to, to a start. But March has always been a tough month, you know, especially traveling from the West Coast. And, you know, as you're seeing you know, a lot of, you know. Uh-oh, we've lost cell. Rut row. Rut row. We've lost cell service with Brad. So well, we'll try to redial that up, make another connection there on that, and see what we can do um with that so but it has been it's 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 yeah. been it's been it's been weird you know you always watch these world of outlaw races you always watch these world of outlaw races and when brad's not racing for the win you're always like okay let's go back to fourth or fifth and see where he finished yeah yeah, yeah so you know, because he's been the benchmark for the consistency yeah. and on those nights when he doesn't win and uh, it's been a little bit weird this year not having yeah having brad yeah there. it'd be interesting i know he was just starting to tell us but the perspective of not racing, you know, there's pros and cons to that. There's maybe family time. There's things you can do to prep with high limit. There's plenty that he has going on. But you see all your other buddies out there running. That's yeah. not always, you know, yeah. that's not easy to think maybe I'm not, I'm missing something or they're getting a little ahead. Yeah. And he talked about, um, he talked about the, we and we talked about this last week or two weeks ago here on the program, the month of March. Yeah. The month of March, okay? And I love when people come out, ah, it serves the world of outlaws right for going here. Well, they tried California, got rained out the entire month of March. Yep. They tried, a couple of years ago, they tried the, this Mississippi-Texas thing, yeah. and they got rained out. They tried Pennsylvania last year and got rained out, and here we are somewhere, Texas, Oklahoma, and they're getting rained out most of the time. March is a brutal month. It really yep. is. And so uh, Brad joins us back on the Sage Fruit Outline. Brad, you were talking just a little bit about the difference of not racing or not watching all the weather apps as a as a guy that's got to jump on an airplane every week. What has it been like this month of March? Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. My phone decided to do one of those uh, where it just drops out for no particular reason. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. So I mean, March has always been tough. So you know, got our eight races in, and uh, you know, it's allowed me to spend a little more time at home and it's allowed me to spend a little bit more time at silver dollar um we had the mini gold cup uh so i was on a tractor you know trying to, to help we lost low morale last year um you know right. unfortunately and and so we're, we have a big void to fill at, at silver dollar with track prep and, and things like that so uh you know just just working and, and enjoying you know a little bit change of pace but uh obviously excited to get going here in april um you know, I don't miss flying out in March to to races like you guys were just talking about for one night here and one night there. It's just, it's really tough on everybody. Uh, the team sitting out in the hotel and, and racing one time a week or no no times a week. Uh, it's just a challenge, you know, in March. So I I don't miss that one bit to be honest, and I don't really feel like I've missed anything. Just 
hopefully uh, when we get going in April, uh, the weather will be changing and changing for the better. And hopefully we'll uh, we'll get plenty of racing in uh, you know in the months that are warm and, and you know race weather. Brad, on the ownership side of high limit racing, um, when you look at the first four races of the season, and now you've had this time to to maybe reflect to work on what's coming up, where how would you assess where where you're at? Yeah, I thought High Limit Racing, you know, staff did a really good job at East Bay. You know, first race of the year, we get a challenge with uh, rain halfway through a night. We have to do a day race and a a night race and run fans out, you know, and, and bring them back in. And, you know, all the challenges that, that kind of come with, a, you know, an event where there's, you know, weather in, interfering. And I thought they did a great job. I thought we put on some great racing, you know, two shows in one day. And, and that's really hard to do from a track prep standpoint oh no no doubt we've Thanks lost him again and happy yep oh no i can hear you guys sorry about that okay can you cool. hear me? yeah we missed a little bit of it but you're back out you're back with us we're good now i don't know why my phone's messing up i'm not i'm not really in a bad area <laughs> but uh anyway um no, I thought they did a great job at east bay and then uh up to golden isles uh you know we're trying something different there with um you know the Lucas Oil Late Model Series uh, conjoined with us, and I and I once again I thought we put on some great racing. Uh, you know that track was a lot different and a challenge for the for the guys, but to see Jacob Allen win was really cool. So, uh, you know, we took some time to reflect on the things that we think we could do better, and and uh, hopefully when we you know kind of unload in April and get going for the season, uh, you know we can keep the momentum going and and hopefully have some great racing uh, you know throughout the season. You mentioned the Golden Isles thing, and I've become over the last couple of years a huge fan of dirt late model racing, uh, and, and strictly fanboy of that. I just I love watching that, and you know, so much was said about you know who was there and who wasn't there and everything like that. Is is, is that something in the right time and place that 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 you would be appealing to you guys to to to, to do a little bit more as you guys move forward throughout the course of uh, the coming years? Yeah, absolutely. I think you. You know, what's interesting to me is, you know, we're starting to get more crossover fans between late models and sprint cars, but there's some very heavy areas that are very late model, you know, uh, fan friendly and, and very heavy sprint car fan friendly. Yep. Um, you know, for instance, the Midwest seems to do better with, with sprint cars in certain areas. And then uh, when you go down to the south, there's some areas there where they're, they're heavy late model fans and, and not real big into the, into the sprint cars. So, you know, as we're trying to grow the sport and, uh, you know, trying to get new fans to see, you know, what sprint cars are all about and see our product, uh, you know, we're going to take some of those risks and go to places that, that we know might be a challenge. Uh, I think a Thursday night at Golden Isle, you know, with, with just sprint cars on tap was always going to be a challenge. And, uh, you know, when it came Saturday with, with both uh, both classes there, uh, we had a phenomenal crowd and a, and a great show. So, um, you know, we want to keep doing it. We just have to kind of do it strategically, um, you know, as, as you know, find areas and, and team up with the late models. And, and, you know, there'll be times that we can help the late models go see a new audience, and, and there'll be times that the late models can help the sprint cars see a, see a new audience. So I don't think any of the fans, uh, you know, left there unhappy. I think they saw, you know, uh, two great shows, and, and it seemed like a lot of fans uh, really enjoyed having, you know, two of the, the premier series uh, in one night. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Brad, on, on a race night like these first four that you did this year, I wanted to pick your brain a little bit about how you wear both hats. I know last year you dealt with it with the Tuesday night series, being an owner and being a driver. Uh, but what is that like on a race night? Do you just kind of step away and you're in driver mode, or are you kind of juggling both? Yeah, I mean, I think for the series to be successful, um, you know, it, it really depends on me being just being a race driver when I'm there to be a race driver, and uh, I think that's why it was so important to hire the staff that we that we were able to, to hire. Uh, you know, we have Mike Hess leading the ship, you know, with the series, and uh, you know that just takes a lot of stress off of my plate. Um, you know, and I can just be a race driver, and then you know Kendra Jacobs and, and Josh Peterman are on the, the kind of the business side of the promotion side. And then they do a great job. So honestly, uh, you know, I try to help a little bit, maybe the day before, and kind of just be around and support the the team. But uh, honestly, I felt very relaxed at East Bay, and I was really impressed with how they handled everything. Uh, I wasn't really involved in any of the decision making. 
um, you know, just was there to drive my race car. And then, uh, you know, when we, when we do our Monday morning calls and, uh, you know, stuff like that, uh, you know, we discuss everything. I'm a little bit more part of the business, but as far as the at racetrack stuff, I, I felt very relaxed and very, uh, you know, just, just a race driver and, and was there to win the race just like any other, uh, you know, time that I've been there. Brad, the last time, and, you, and you've done a fair number of interviews since the last time we talked on Wing Nation. It was back at the end of last year when you rolled into studio here. But there's been so much ground covered. And again, folks can go out. There's a lot of people doing great podcasts. So, Brad, you've been out there and doing it. But as you look at things from the 1st of November when we chatted, you rolled out. Now you got 17 high rollers. You've got the charter agreement. You've got the schedule. You've got all of that. What's kind of your take? What's step back a little bit? Six months, uh, six months ago versus where you're at now. Kind of what's your take on what all you guys have accomplished at this point? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, very grateful that so many people have uh, believed in our vision, and you know, you can't do this without having great partners and, and you know. Our partners are not only our sponsors, but they're our team owners and our drivers. You know, we're doing this together. And I think that's kind of what the charter program's, you know, here to show. And I think the, um, you know, I think that you have to have a long-term vision for this stuff. And so this stuff didn't happen overnight. You know, we've been, you know, looking at how to grow the sport and, you know, a pathway to, to make high limit, high limit racing, a, you know, a national series um you know make it bigger and better so um you know obviously we got 17 great teams we got a great schedule it's kind of just time to execute you know the actual racing part and i think that's you know where we're set up to, to have a lot of success this year is a great schedule a great staff and a great group of drivers it's very intriguing for the fans to tune in and helps us sell tickets and, and all the things that you know that you have to do to run a successful series so uh, when I sit back, I don't really ever get a chance to sit back, but uh, I'm definitely proud of, you know, all the people that we have and, and where we're at today, uh, and it makes me super excited to see what we can accomplish in the next 12, 24, and, and 36 months because we got some big plans ahead and uh, some big announcements coming, uh, you know, hopefully uh, by the end of this season. Brad, this uh, speaking of announcements, in the last week or so, you guys announced a title sponsor, Kabuto, has come on board. How important was it for you guys to have that that title sponsor and that credibility? Yeah, I mean, I just it goes back to just you know all of our partners believing in the vision and, and Kubota is a great brand. I mean, it's a, a brand that really works. I think with with our fan base and uh, you know we we play in the dirt just like farmers and, and tractors are made to play in the dirt. So uh, you know we get to showcase their products you know, up and down the road at these racetracks with Kubota tractors. And, uh, yeah, I think it's ultra important to, to solidify, you know, kind of make us feel, you know, give us that important feel that, we, that we're looking for that, uh, you know, kind of solidifies what, what Kyle and I's vision is for everything. So, uh, yeah, we're really proud of that. Uh, we're really proud of all our partners that have, that have believed in us, but uh, really great to have an entitlement sponsor in, in Kubota. It's such a great brand. You mentioned partners and sponsors, and you've talked about the team owners as uh, part of your partnerships and sponsors as well. We've talked about the high roller agreement, 17. Um, I, I, and, and I understand having 17 teams buy into your vision is great. Um, are there challenges? Would, is there a sweet spot? Have you, have you thought about this, a sweet spot, 17? Is that a good number? Do you need 24? Do you need 12? Um, you have 17, which is great. Um, but is 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 as you roll through the season and the nuts and bolts of it, how is going to be ma- how are you going to be managing that number? Yeah, I think I mean it's a great question, Steve. I think that we're learning, right? Yeah. We, you know, this is this is all new, so we don't know what the magic number is. Uh, I guess it comes down to resources, you know. And we were obviously with seventeen new teams traveling, and you still have the outlaw teams, you know, quite a few outlaw teams traveling, so. There's a lot more teams out on the road traveling, so obviously there's more resources, but is there enough resources to go around to all, you know, whatever that is, 29 teams? I think that's something that we're going to have to go a while and see, you know, how the teams feel about it. And, and I think some of that stuff will sort itself out. You know, maybe a team wasn't quite ready, or, or maybe they are. You know, maybe they're able to subsidize more with their sponsorships, and, you know, some of that information that we're giving the teams now with, 
with viewership data, maybe they're able to sell bigger sponsorships and, you know, maybe they're able to, to be out on the road with just those extra resources that we're giving them. So uh, I think we're going to learn, you know, as a group together, uh, you know, what the right number is. I think some of that stuff's just going to naturally organically happen. Um, but we want to be as supportive as we can, uh, you know, to any teams that are supporting us or, you know, any you know professional sprint car team out there trying to, to grind it out, make a living, and, and do this. Uh, you know, we love it. We love all the teams. Brad, you mentioned viewership numbers and how you share that with your teams. I know I, I'm pretty sure that was a little sticky spot with the other series. Um, when you look at those first four races and maybe from even last year, did the viewership numbers surprise you? Were they what you expected? Were they not what you expected? Yeah, they were honestly, you know, I don't know what to expect. Uh, we had that sample size last year, uh, you know, and obviously uh, they were they were really good. That's what obviously helped us, you know, move the move to the next step. Is uh, but I would say it, it was pleasantly surprising. Uh, you know, you know that you're going to come out with a little bit of extra momentum, uh, just the excitement of the newness. So we'll see how it goes the rest of the year. But the first four have been phenomenal uh the one obviously with the late models together was was our highest viewed ever uh race and and it was really good for flow um you know it was was a big number so yeah it's exciting to see how many people are engaged uh in our sport and into high limit racing and you know how many late model fans and sprint car fans are starting to cross over now um you know i just really love what flow has you know you can just literally go on their app and you can watch all sorts of racing. So you're just seeing a lot more of the crossover fan. It's, you know, it's almost like its own little, uh, you know, TV show. Uh, you can watch, uh, you know, you can even watch the AFT motorcycles now. You can watch uh, some drag racing on there. Uh, you have sprint cars and late models. So just, you just, you know, even when you're bored, there's just always something to watch. And I think that's really helpful in growing, you know, uh, the sport of racing in general. And I think Kyle Larson has been a big part of that, but, but Flo's done a great job as well. Yeah, it's fascinating. It really, mm-hmm. truly is what you can see on there. Um, big, you, you mentioned, and we, and I've asked you about partnering up with the late models. What's your perspective now, Brad, and how has it changed as you look at beyond even late models, people you might partner with? I mean, do you do you do you look at NHRA? Do you look at NASCAR events? Do you look at um, uh, motocross events or or, or or dirt bike events or, or anything? How's your perspective changed now as an owner of a series when you when you look at other forms of, of motorsports or even entertainment, if you will? Yeah, I think that's that's more of it. Steve, it's, it's entertainment, you know, because we're, we're just, we're entertainers, just like all those other things that you just mentioned, you know, uh, we're competing with concerts, we're competing with, you know, uh, Supercross, we're competing with, you know, everything that's entertaining people. So you're looking at what's working and what's work, what's not working. Uh, you know, even when I'm in Australia, I'm looking at what they're doing different and, and what's working and what's not working. So, um, you know, fan engagement, it's, it's ultra competitive business, um, you know, just, just like any other business in the world. Um, but you're trying to, to entertain fans and you're trying to put on a good show. And, and obviously we want the sports to become, you know, more and more professional. And, uh, you know, so we're going to be obviously trying different things. And, and uh, so, yeah, definitely watching, uh, you know, even just seeing what the late models did and, and Rick Schwally with Lucas Oil. Uh, he's amazing. He's done a great job with that series. So there's a lot to learn, you know, everywhere right now. And, and we're certainly, uh, learning, you know, with everything that we try and do and some stuff's good and some stuff's bad. And sometimes <laughs> the fans get, a uh, uh, riled up pretty easily, but you know, at the end of the day, I think they're going to see that, that we're going to try things, but if it's, but if it doesn't work, we're, we're willing to, to admit that it, that it wasn't the right move and, and move on to the next thing. Yeah, with social media, they're not That's afraid to let you know right right away what they like, actually what they don't like. No, no, Most people don't tell you what they like. They just go for what they don't like. Brad, going back to the, the driver's yeah. side of things, um, how excited are you to get back in the car? Started off the season strong. You had to win a bunch of top fives. Um, but from the, from the driver's perspective, how excited are you to get back to racing? Yeah, very. Uh, obviously, our Napa Auto Parts car was fast right out of the gate. Uh, won the first race of the season, and yeah, it's just, it's fun. It's exciting to me this year because it's different. Um, you know, there's the aspect of, you know, kind of this rivalry that's, 
building a little bit between, you know, who has the better drivers or the high limit drivers better than the outlaw drivers. And obviously from my point, you know, I want, I want to make sure that, you know, uh, the high limit drivers are the best and I'm part of that. So there's that side of it. And then there's just the side of it of, I don't know. I mean, some, some of me just wants to, you know, feel like I have a, a point to prove a little or a chip on my shoulder. I don't know why, but, uh, you know, I definitely just want to win and, and, uh, win a lot of races this year. So, um, there's no stress of, you know, I know that I still want to win the, the high limit championship, but there's less stress, I should say on points racing and more on, uh, trying to win races, win big races. And, um, you know, I just, I think my team's really ready to, and really hungry just to kind of spread its wings. And, uh, we have this freedom this year. So, you know, we can, we can make decisions on where we go, you know, and race and win. And, you know, if we're a little burnt out, we can, we can take a, you know, a race or two off, you know, at times. So that's a really good feeling. It's exciting to to kind of have something different in front of us. Um, yeah. I'm just excited to get to the racetrack April 9th at, at Riverside and, and kind of get the season started. And, uh, you know, hopefully by, you know, May and June, when we're really getting going. We can uh, start stacking up those wins. One week from today, April 9th, and boy, you say different, Riverside, Texarkana, the dirt track of Texas. I know you've been there before. RPM Speedway coming up. It does have to be really interesting for you as a race car driver to be going to so many unique and different places. Yeah, I've only been, out of those four that you just mentioned, I've only been to Riverside. And uh, I think, you know, out of the first, these next Seven, I believe I've only been to two of them. I think I've only been to Salina and Riverside. So I've never raced at uh, the dirt track at Texas. I've never raced at Texarkana, never raced at RPM, never raced at that Southern Oklahoma. I have raced at Salina, um, Oklahoma. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's exciting. It's refreshing, uh, to go to some, some new places. Um, you know, just, you know, Golden Isles was kind of different. I'd never been there. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how we can we can get a car a little bit better. We were, you know, not as good as we needed to be at Golden Isles. And, honestly, East Bay, uh, we weren't as good as we, we needed to be. We were, we were close. We've been close. Um, so, hopefully, once we get kind of in a rhythm here racing at, at all these different tracks, we can kind of, uh, you know, find our rhythm with our car and, and – uh, you know, but it'll be challenging going to tracks that you've never been to. Uh, but it makes it pretty even across the board because I don't think I, you know a lot of our guys have really raced at many of these tracks. So it'll be exciting to kind of see who who steps up, uh, you know, and, and can really uh, be the car to beat on the high limit series. Um, there's a lot of a lot of great cars with Rico and and Brent Marks and Tyler Courtney and and uh, I don't know all the guys. Justin Peck. There's so many of them that it's it's hard to list them all. Um, you know, in the wild card. Corey Day, he's always excited to watch, too. No doubt. And that kid's got some talent, that's for sure. Brad, we truly appreciate your time on this. Uh, real quick question before we go. Uh, have you, you you mentioned a little bit earlier, you, have you been able to do anything off track with the family that, uh, that, that before we get started here, that's, uh, that's kind of uh, been nice for you, spend a little time with, spend a little time with the family? You, you cut out on me a little there. I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you had to say. Yeah, have you had any time? Have you done any? Uh, have you done any time away from uh, you know vacation or anything with the family a little bit here? I, I think, don't know. I think the, the con- yeah, connection's lost. I'm we've sorry, lost guys. you, Brad. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, oh, and have yeah. have fun next week. Yeah, now it's- yeah, figures. Yeah, now I can hear you. But thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I look forward to it. I'm, my plan is to come down and see you at Texarkana, Texas, and RPM. Can't wait to get down there. Yeah, it'll be good. Awesome. Brad Sweet. Yeah, we ran out of signal there at the end. Yes. Oh, well. <laughs> um, man, young man's got a lot going on, doesn't he? He sure does. Well, it's going to be fun to see, and this is where we get into it and see what happens. Let's step away. When we come back, more Wing Nation. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Stewart strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. 
Winning quality in every bite. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation. We do appreciate Brad. Uh, we, uh, as I said, we were like, okay, do we talk to him right after? You know, because Kendra reached out and said, "You guys want to talk to Brad?" Well, of course we want to talk to Brad. Do we reach out right after? You know, Golden Isles. Well, what are we going to talk about? What, what are you going to do the next six weeks? You yeah. know, I mean that sort of thing. And then it's like, and then this week, hit, and I'm like, oh boy, we better talk to Brad now. Because they have got, what is it, seven races in 11 days starting next Tuesday. Yeah. And so the next couple of Tuesdays, the boy is going to be tied up. Uh, and uh, it's going to be fun, and we're going to be following along with all of that. So it's going to be cool. And fingers crossed. Uh, now, one little one little hurdle I've got to clear uh, to pull the trigger. But next week, hoping to go down to Texas um, and see, uh, see Texarkana, which is, um, which is Tim Crawley's yep. track. I think I'm going to see that as much as anything else. Uh, but uh, just to catch up with all the sprint car world, it's been good. Going to do that weekend of racing, uh, high limit weekend uh, coming up uh, next weekend. Uh, as long as one, I need one little thing in my life to go the way it needs to go. So hopefully that'll work out. So let's get into it. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Uh, one sprint car place, their birthday calendar. Again, we're in a phase where it's really been quiet. Later this week, or Monday of next week, Bobby Davis Jr., Frank Lockhart, Marshall Shorty, Pittsburgh. Later this week, uh, Jack Hoddenshield, uh, Herman Church, Tommy Hinnerschitz, Pete DiPaolo, and Friday would have been the birthday of 2013 inductee Andy Loden. was born in 1922. In the 30s, he was a teenager. You imagine part of that car culture mm -hmm. out in California. And I always we've, we've talked about this frequently. And then you get to the stage where you're 18, 19, 20 years old, and the world decides to have a world war. Yeah. And he got called up and served in the Navy during World War II. Upon returning, racing resumed in the mid-40s. He started racing with the California Roadster Association, was the 1950 AAA Pacific Coast Sprint Car Champion. Seven straight Indy 500s, finished fourth in the Indy 500 in 1951 and had a, a career-ending accident in 1957, but lived uh, another 30 years and passed in 1987, but his life is forever enshrined at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. And Aaron, that is such a wonderful, wonderful place. And uh, you, you got your tickets. You're going to get me my sprint car this yeah. year. You keep promising. You keep talking about. All this. right. Yeah, that's the deal. You're driving though. We I'll get drive. This. Oh, you kidding me? All right. So you better get you ready for the Triple oh, X chassis, I'm... 410 All Parker Racing Engine. Yes, I am. You're, you're, Absolutely. Right. Good or deal. maybe I'll do the cash option of fifty grand <laughs> and keep all of us from the no, hassle. no, no, no. If I win, I could take the cash option. You get the race car. Oh, wait a if, minute. If now, gonna... I don't know if I like the way this is going, but uh, you can get ten tickets for twenty five dollars. There's discounts on larger. <laughs> purchases the drawing will come up on december 23rd you can find out more at sprint car hof <laughs> i don't know about that maybe we need to re re renegotiate well, then you this. couldn't say that's never sat in a car before so we need to change that line yeah and yeah. then drivers would say well as you know steve yeah right yeah, yeah absolutely they would never then never you wouldn't it. just be the dumb radio guy anymore yeah, you could you, you could have, you know, right oh, no, I'll you, you could use that Lance moniker DeWeese. anymore oh no 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 i got a long and storied history of being a dumb radio when guy when lance dewey starts talking shocks and all that then you right. understand it yeah oh absolutely you, you could you'd be one of the guys yeah. steve yeah. you oh, wouldn't be the odd yeah. man out any absolutely. longer you would actually be able to come back and tell me what you talked about yeah exactly like like following <laughs> danny dietrich's tweets i have no idea what they're talking about you would then. I yes, would. Yes, this is all to help it your would, radio with career. My, my, with my <laughs> dumb brain, it would take about 75 years of that. And I don't know no, that I, I got 75 you'd years. You probably learn pretty quick. I don't yeah, like, know. I got 75 years ahead of me. If I got, if I got another 75 years, we're going to be talking about some other things. So, um, uh, it, 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 so somebody can, somebody, whether it's me or somebody else, you can win that sprint car. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Support the Sprint Car Hall of Fame. Aaron, <laughs> uh, we have got, now, yeah. I am telling you, the month of April, Here we business go. is picking up. Here Batting we go. Batting down the hatches, as you would Batting say. Batting down the hatches. <laughs> We're going to be going... Wow, it starts this week in World Look at of that. I've used two of your sayings in just a little you, bit of time. I know. You're, 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 I'm rubbing off on you. Isn't that a good thought? Oh, that a good God. Thought? I'm, all right. A, this oh, is this, my last day. I've nightmare retired. nightmare material right there. <laughs> nightmare material right there. Exactly. Next thing, you're going to be uh, you're going to be driving to Pennsylvania for one of those pretzel boys. So, <laughs> oh, uh, yes, absolutely. All right. We made it all the way to this point. 49 <laughs> minutes into the show, and we had our first reference of food, and I had to struggle to get yeah, it in Yeah, we completely went off the rails. Yes, absolutely. So. Uh, 
world of, where, are the, where in the wide world of sports are the world of outlaws? The world of outlaws. They're at US 36 Raceway in Osborne, Missouri on Friday. Last year, Sheldon Hodenshield won. It's the seventh time, seventh time the world of outlaws have gone there. I have a different, I have another project that I work on. I have this little blog site called Postman 68. And it's nothing special, nothing big. You know, it's like, it's, it's really stuff I like. Yeah. And it's just having a place to house stuff I like. One of the things that I love is racetrack revival. Okay. Mm. We spent a couple of years, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Matthew Dillner did a great yeah. job on Lost Speedways. I love that program. I love that series they did. I'm the optimist, though. I'm like, what about these racetracks that have sat yeah. idle that come back? And there are some Plenty of them, that yeah. happen. There's a lot of them that happen. On my website, Postman 68, you see Racetrack Revival. There's five or six that are going to happen in the month of April. Including, wow. including technical, the way I've got it, the Texas, the dirt track in Texas. But yeah. I, why I say this now, Saturday night, the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars will be at Arrowhead Raceway in Concord, uh, Concord Oklahoma. This is the inaugural race, uh, all going to season at the track, the Jason Johnson Classic. This is a racetrack that was a quarter mile closed down in 2018. A guy by the name of Willie Gamble, and this is highlighted on my my blog, Postman sixty eight. Willie Gamble built, bought the place, leveled it. So when I sent out and talked to the folks out there, they said, "Well, this really isn't the old racetrack." I said, "Well, is it on the same property?" Yes, it's on the same property. He literally leveled everything. Wow! Built a third mile, state of the art oval. And Saturday night, the World of Outlaw wow. Moss Energy Drinks will be there. They had a few races last year. At uh, the racetrack, somebody drove by. I think it's right along an interstate. Somebody drove by and says, I never even knew this track was here and look at it. So, really good Saturday night, uh, Arrowhead Raceway in Colcord, not Concord. I get all my Concords and Concord. Well, yeah. Colcord, C O L C O R D, Oklahoma. There you have it. Oh, what else is going on, Aaron? Well, Friday and Saturday, IRA and MOA are at 34 Raceway in Burlington, Iowa. Also, the Power Eye Bandit Outlaw Sprints are at the dirt track at Texas. It's the first race on the track since 2019. Yeah, the way I set up that, that racetrack yeah. revival is if the track is sat idle for a year, I consider it a racetrack revival. <laughs> well, yeah, this one here. Well, look, look, uh, Arrowhead is set since 2018. Yeah. And the, the dirt track at Texas hasn't raced sprint cars. And it's such a nice facility. They had a, they had a um, um, two years ago. They had an um, uh, oval track cycle race there. Okay. Yeah, I okay. remember that. Yes. But 2019 since yeah. the last time they I did ran cars. the outlaw race there many moons ago. Well, Brad's, when, if Brad yeah, when Brad said he didn't, but I, I, he wasn't running full time outlaws yeah. yet. Yeah. Because Brad, I'm I, I would have guessed you're that old, exactly. Mm -hmm. And he's that young. Turns yeah, out. I would have guessed that that would have been the track. My favorite Brad's part racing. was the tunnel. You got the to tunnel. drive out. Yeah. Yeah, you pit outside you of the race track. And, drive and the, the wall is continuous all the way around. We talk about openings in the wall. There's no opening in the wall there. No opening in the wall. Because you come up a tunnel right into the infield. Yeah. And then I like the pits that. outside. Yeah, it's really cool. So uh, Power Bandit, as you mentioned, going to be there. And then High Limits is there next Saturday night yeah. for NASCAR weekend. So I know they're all excited to get a few races in on that racetrack. And we'll see who does well this week with the Power Eye Bandits yeah. to get set up for next week's High Limit show. Fast runs Saturday night at Atomic. Bryce talked about sneaking down there. King of the West, the Asparagus Cup. <laughs> the As I love it. Tony that runs uh, Tony that runs Stockton Dirt Track is an asparagus farm. Yeah. Oh, the time I was out there, the asparagus that Gary Selzy gave me. Gary Selzy gave me asparagus right there. That should be a... That this could, is, yeah. That could be a reality TV show right there. <laughs> that, exactly. That's interesting. The fact that Gary Selzy and Steve Post even know what asparagus is is probably the first miracle. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the asparagus <laughs> cup for the King of the West series. Uh, Aaron, Central Pennsylvania, man, they are locked in. And yep. the preliminary, I've already got the preliminary weather forecast. Fingers are crossed for Saturday, particularly for Port, but yeah. we're going to be busy up there. Yeah, Friday, Williams Grove, Lincoln and Port run Saturday, Bridgeport Sunday. Nice, absolutely. Weekly racing at Attica Raceway Park as uh, they continue on Farmington Empire Speedway. And I love season openers, season openers, Fremont, Mercer, and Wayne County. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. And if you're here in the Carolinas, I love to give Pete Walton a little blast here. I'm not going to be around this week. Carolina Speedway and Cherokee for the USCS. So the place your mama warned you about on Saturday night. <laughs> uh, uh, great. The, it's it's fascinating to me because you you go, you you roll on. There was no actually when we talk about the results, every 360 race in the country got rained out last weekend. There, so there was yeah. a few, but they all got rained out. And so, but now you get into April, that schedule starts to get more yeah. and more robust and hopefully more races and better weather. And then Pete will add some. Oh, well, Pete will always add something. Exactly. <laughs> Pete Walton, he ain't as scared to have a race, that's for sure. I get to see him in a few weeks, uh, Talladega. Uh, again, we talked to Brad about this. The World of Outlaw case 
construction late models and USCS are on the docket yeah. at Talladega Short Track NASCAR weekend. I like that. That's cool. Fun stuff for sure. It was awesome. How about that kid? Bryce yeah. Lucius. Oh, Pretty man. impressive. Pretty 17 impressive. years old. 17 years old. Going to be fun to see. And Brad Sweet, we appreciate Bryce and Brad Sweet joining us. The high limit racing. Going to be interesting to see. And this is where we start. This is now where we start to see what's going on with this. Thing. Yep. Because everybody will be all hands on deck. Everyone will be racing. And it's going to be fascinating to see. That is for sure. So we appreciate Bryce and Brad joining us. More important, though, than all of that, thank you for joining us here this time on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit.